Hi guys, Annabelle here from Horizon Cosplay and today we are unboxing another Fisher, Fisher, Fister, Fister and Rossman sewing machine. Now a few weeks ago we unboxed another one and I actually repaired it because according to the label it wasn't in working order and we did get it, get it, get it working, oh my gosh I can't speak today. And essentially my friend decided to buy two of these machines from a lovely lady in Oxford who was selling them both and now that we've done the other one it's time to have a look at this. So this one does come with a case and even a key. I have attached some string to the key so that we don't lose it because that is always a concern and essentially let's just open it up and see what it's like on the inside I actually glanced at this one briefly when we picked it up but honestly have not looked at it since and it's been at least a month so let's see how this goes well that's a good start can't seem to get the damn thing open oh no there we go alrighty oh this one's nice okay so initial thoughts and that for the storage area this one actually doesn't have a lid and there is spider webs in there so I hope there's not a spider that's made his home. We have some random paper which is always good. So this one was also a display piece for the same lady I got the other one from. Decals look to be in relatively good condition and she did tell me that this one was supposedly in working order. Definitely runs smooth, actually really smooth. Now this machine that we weren't able to date the last one, I do know it is newer than the old machines. The older machines had the bobbins with the two metal plates that go either side. This one has a bobbin that goes front to back or back to front, which I can't remember what it's called, but it does mean that it's a newer model of the machine. So let's continue having a look in this. We got some janky black thread, got some green thread, which actually might be usable. It's just very dusty on the outside. We have a random, who knows what that is, but it'll be something. Spare screw, always good. The feet, again, are quite rusty. The lady did say that she'd had these in her attic quite a while, so I'm guessing it was just a bit damp up there. Ah, right, we have some bobbins. One bobbin, two bobbins, three bobbins. Oh, that one's a bit gross. Rusty thing, four bobbins, another spare screw, rolled hem foot of slightly small size, and the rest of the stuff in there is just old. So the fact that there's four bobbins with this, and that's not even including if there's one on the inside, which I'm pretty sure there is, is a really good thing because I was a little bit worried with the other machine we only got two, which, you know, you can have your two basic things of thread, but it is always quite good to um, essentially just have some spare. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the other one, which is give this cupboard bit a bit of a hoover, hoover off the dust from it as well because it's kind of gross and dusty, like literally Oh, don't know if you can see that, but that is ugh. not quite as bad as the other one though, probably because this one did actually have a case. Now we're going to open this up. I've got another can of Lemonata and we're going to clean the bottom at the same time. And already the inside is looking much, much better. Oh my gosh, I've just found the serial number. 1596372. Right, laptop time, let's date this baby. This machine was made somewhere between 1915 and 1920, which means this machine is over 100 years old. That's pretty damn cool. Okay, I found another database which I think is gonna be a bit more detailed and also tell us what model of machine it is. It was made in 1919. Okay, so this machine was made one year after World War One ended. According to the information on this website, during the Great War, the sewing machine's productions could have been maintained high despite Fisher and Rossman starting the production of weapons of war. Because of the victory of not Germany, and this is a German machine, they actually had to pay reparations because they were involved in the making of war weapons. However, on January 10th, 1920, they were allowed to start exporting back to the UK and employed a guy called Oliver Quitman who opened a office in City Road, London and essentially they would send them over without the branding because I think Frischer and Rossmann by the sound of it has a different name in Germany and Frischer and Rossmann was the British English name for the company which is quite interesting. So even though the machine was made in Germany, I'm not sure if it's just the Fisher and Rossman bit or if the decals itself was put on in the UK, but one of them were, and that is super, super interesting. And it unfortunately doesn't say what model of machine this is. I know it's a later one. So if this one's 1919 and that one that we had the other week was earlier, 
then that makes a very interesting point as to, you know, when that one was made. But for now, let's give this a clean up, laptop away, toilet paper out, water in, and let's wipe this thing of all its dust before we give it a good oil. If you guys want me to go into detail at some point as well, <laughs> showing you all the nitty gritty bits that I do to try and restore these machines, please do let me know in the comments down below. I am not sure if it would make a good video, and obviously I'm not that experienced, so kind of might be interesting to see it from someone who doesn't really know what they're doing's perspective. I would be happy to, but I would just like to know if that's something you guys would like to see, so please let me know. Okay, so now that's all cleaned up, it's time to see if it sews, which means we've got to thread it. I had a bobbin, here you go. We have the bobbin shuttle. This bobbin doesn't have a lot of thread, but we're gonna go with this anyway. Ooh. Well, considering it was stiff earlier, I'm guessing the fact that it just popped right off is a good thing. And again, we're gonna put some scrap fabric on top of the machine just to protect those things there. I don't actually know how to thread this machine, so I'm just making an educated guess here about how it works. To be fair, it's quite similar to Ben's Singer machine, so I'm hoping it pretty much just gets threaded up the same way. Yeah, okay, we've caught the bobbin thread. So now, let's see if she sews. My god, she runs beautifully and the stitches are absolutely perfect. What do you think of it? Does the, the machine meet your approval? And with that guys, I think we can officially call this unboxing complete. These two machines will be going to their new home next week and I'm very happy to be delivering them both in full working order. Now, thank you guys so, so much for joining me on this journey. If you do wanna see more Vintage Singer sewing machines, a playlist will pop up at the end of this video. I highly recommend that you go view it because I have been doing some work on restoring some of the machines that have featured in the playlist but weren't restored in the videos and I will be posting them soon. If you do wanna see that make sure that you subscribe and i will see you next wednesday with more cosplay sewing and vintage sewing machine content until then guys have a beautiful day bye